Good morning. My name is uh, Paolo Contero and I am a chief urology in uh, an academic hospital in Torino, Italy. Today, I am going to present you the potential role of a urinary marker by using uh, two short clinical cases. He was diagnosed with an intermediate risk namos invasive body cancer four years ago. It was a four centimeter PTA low grade tumor. Subsequently, he had a negative cystoscopy three months after QRBT. And his surveillance continued by alternating a urinary biomarker with cystoscopy and cytology. At the last follow up visit, the urinary biomarker turned out to be positive. So he was sent for a cystoscopy, which confirmed that there was a small papillary tumor. He had a TORBT, and uh, this tumor was a PTA, but high grade this time. The resection was complete. There was no, there was muscle in the, in the specimen. And his first follow-up uh, cystoscopy and cytology were both negative. Jonathan was uh, diagnosed again with an intermediate risk of muscle invasive body cancer four years ago. Again, the four centimeter PTA low grade tumor. He had a negative cystoscopy at three months after the QRBT. And he was also suggested to alternate a urinary biomarker with the cystoscopy and cytology. And on uh, the last follow up visit, the biomarker test was negative. Six months later, he had a cystoscopy and they found a small papillary tumor. The cytology was negative. He had a biopsy of this tumor, which turned out to be a PTA low grade. And the subsequent cystoscopy and cytology after the QRBT were negative. Now, the question is, uh, how can we use a urinary biomarker today? And why do we need a urinary biomarker? Now, if you look at the guidelines, uh, when uh, we discuss about follow-up scheme of an intermediate risk non most invisible cancer, we see that actually this scheme is based on cystoscopy and urine cytology, but uh, it, say, it is uh, stated that this scheme has to be individualized, meaning that uh, the schedule of cystoscopy is left to the urologist. And uh, of course, what is the aim of our follow-up scheme in an intermediate risk normal invasive beta cancer, which has a 5% risk of progression at five years? Obviously, is to detect those few patients who are going to progress, to have a great progression from low grade to high grade. This is the main aim. And the other aim, is potentially to reduce the burden of uh, cystoscopy, but to do it safely. Now, in, uh, in the cases that I presented, it appeared clear that uh, in one case, the urinary marker did not detect a low-grade recurrence, uh, which we know it can happen uh, with a probability of probably 50 to 60% of cases. But at the same time, the urinary marker was able to detect a small high-grade recurrence. And we know that uh, this is realistic because uh, we have at the moment four urinary markers with a sensitivity in high-grade uh, disease that uh, exceeds uh, 80 to 90 percent uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, cases. So, by doing this alternation of a urinary marker with the cystoscopy, if we look at the presumed 
follow-up uh, scheme of an intermediate risk uh, nomos invisible de cancer, we see that we may actually be able to reduce the number of cystoscopy over five years of follow-up of at least 40%, meaning that uh, we will have a significant advantage for the patient and the healthcare system with uh, actually minimal or virtually no risk for the patient. I thank you very much for your attention.